All right, guys. Uh, I guess we'll get started. I'll actually put the court on this. Uh, my name is Mike Sword. Some of you in here probably know me. Um, and this is a music uh, panel. I felt I don't think we have had a music panel other than uh, you know pod safe music and how to use it, but nothing from the musician's perspective uh, that much. Um, especially with a lot going on, you know, with MP3s, iTunes, RAA, and how. We can use social media as far as that goes. So I thought we'd draw on and Sam, get some people together. And we got two of them. <laughs> well, Ryan here, uh, we'll introduce them. Uh, first, I want to, my experience in this. Uh, there's a reason why I'm not just presenting this myself, because uh, while I'm experienced in uh, presenting my music, I definitely don't call myself as a success in that. Uh, my group, I started a few years ago before I kind of got into social uh, marketing craze was uh, crap, and we had a lot of fun with that. There's Chachi right there on the screen. Um, <clears throat> and before the Twitter and everything, we got on iTunes and everything, and have, we have an album. Uh, our top selling uh, track is actually a skit we did called Titties and Beer for obvious reasons. Uh, so that's kind of my experience with that. Uh, another group I'm working with, uh, I'm hoping to build up here soon, is uh, Really Pale Gangsters. Uh, that's another nerdcore rap group. Uh, but I've worked a lot with people uh, with uh, WesternPHLOs.com. I've actually played shows with uh, Ryan here uh, and a few other people. And um, and uh, I thought we get people that are doing a lot and uh, see what they think about things. So if you guys want to introduce yourselves. I'm Ryan. I'm part of the Basic Sickness. Uh, it's loud music. It's a good time. Rather vulgar time. So what is it? Uh, yo, what's up, guys and girls? Uh, my name is Walt, and uh, since like I don't, I didn't want to be rude in front of this, but I do have to plug my phone in or it's gonna die. But he's stealing all of the circuits. So, is there anything you would like to? It's all about technology, right? Cool. <laughs> cool. Got it. Okay. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, I do a couple things. But one of the things that I teach music lessons online, full um, full time. I grew my business from the ground up. I uh, started in Philly, I, I now live in Manhattan, and I'm one of the featured speakers uh, at this event. So, um, and so, and then what I also do is I arrange songs for four orchestra. So, uh, it's like those two things. So, it's like kind of like music and, and like social media stuff. But, um, yeah, that's what I do. My name's Walt. Hi. Um, I guess the first thing is, uh, um, you know, you guys are using a lot of different stuff. With, you know, Walt's got hold of them right there. <laughs> Um, but what are you using uh, to, to get your, your stuff out there? And you, you actually have a few other things. You have the hip hop cafe and everything going on. Yeah, um, I, I kind of quit all that because it just didn't really seem like it was worth it. All, all right, my but, bits at the time. But what like, are what are you on? What are your experiences? What was working and what didn't work? Well, who all has a MySpace account? Who all checked it within the past week? <laughs> right. I, mean, I, I I do occasionally too. Um, Facebook. Obviously, Twitter. Obviously, obviously. And the one thing that I learned, and this was when MySpace really blew up, was it, when MySpace came about, it was it. It's all you had was MySpace. Facebook slowly trickled down after, but MySpace was the place to be. Um, I don't know if you guys know about you could pay people to buy their accounts. They could build an account with a couple hundred thousand people on it. You buy the account. There were programs that added people and all that stuff and, and it's just crazy to me how quickly myspace had died um you know due to the spammers due to all the annoying bands um and do, there's just everything um so I, I i use all my stuff i use youtube i got a facebook a twitter um a myspace everything now one thing that i have to be careful of is i have a real job um like a real nine to five i sit in my every day of the week and if I ever go for another job, everybody says, watch what you put online because uh, they'll catch up with you. So if you type my government name in online, you will find nothing. I don't exist compared to my band. It's two separate things. So for anybody out there that's thinking about doing anything like that, be very careful. Now, if you're you know, an acoustic guitar player and you go play in you know, lounges or whatever, that's cool. But with what I do in my personal life, my employer would not be, they would be very confused. Let's put it like that. They'd be very, very confused. So just FYI, 
if you're going to ever, and this just goes for anything you do online, just remember, you know, just because you delete a picture off your Facebook, Google has it. Just know that. And they hold on to it forever. And so if you ever go to a website and you can't get to it, just click the little thing that says cache page, and it'll bring up the history of that website. So FYI, again, be very, very careful of what you link to your government name because it can come back on the way you pretty, pretty hard. Um, I don't know, how, like, how are you when you're all musicians? Like, you're all musicians trying to make it online, or you're, you're all like, want to know about like, how it works? Like, I, I just want to get like, a scope for like the demographics here. Uh, so it's like a music panel, there's only three, four, three, five, okay, oh wait, okay, oh, wait. What am I? So it starts out one, and then it starts going to the Okay, so everyone, wait, which, which, which are you asking? Are you a musician or? Yeah, like, I knew that was like, this is like, like a, a music panel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, like, are you all musicians? Musicians, rappers, musicians. you know, just trying to put content oh, okay, yeah, on the musical okay. nature. Got it. Okay. Or have a friend that is and you're interested. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Got it. I just know that I'm but no, but what are you using and, and what's your experience with what works and doesn't work now? Now, you actually produce a show online. So yeah, you're well, automatically already right into it. Yeah, well, okay, so the way that, um, well, what I use, obviously, you can see those six sites there. They're the six most powerful things that, that you have. Your RSS feed, um, your Facebook, obviously, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Dig. And the reason why I put my LinkedIn there is because uh, I, I've actually made a, a lot of money from people who, like, have seen, like, my tutorials, and they have a direct line of communication to my business uh, profile. And has everything of like what I've learned over the past, like, you know, I guess like five years. I, I'm, I'm only 25, like, I don't, I don't have like a, like a huge resume, today, but I have worked with some pretty cool companies. But, um, so that's it, like, the, like, that's what I'm using. And there's people who, like, who will use like 50 websites, but you're better off by the way. I talk really loud, you think? Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. I, I talk really, really loud. That's just the echo loud. in here, too. That's so that? we just got the echo room. So. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, okay, anyway, if I'm talking too loud or too fast, like, we'll all shut up, stop talking, and slow it down or something. But okay, so anyway, um, and I'm all grabbed up too, because I really, you know, I was, I, I was surprised that I made it here, to be honest. Um, so anyway, I'm like running down the street trying to get Um, so those are the six sites that I use, and the thing is that people will use like 40 websites, right? Like they use like, you know, Bebo, like all these other sites, but I think that you're better off just like tackling six sites, not even six, like, like, like two or three, right? And then just building your community authentically through that um, like online uh, site. So like you're better off going in, like for example, like if you go in Twitter, you're better off like just networking on Twitter with like all like the movers and shakers on Twitter and getting like, like maybe like 10 authentic like, you know, like engaged uh, people on Twitter than you are like one person on 10 different sites. Like, does that make sense? You know? So, on Twitter, uh, I don't have a whole lot of people fo like following me. I think, I think it's like 3,500 or something. But there are 3,500 of the biggest movers and shakers in the music industry. Like, the biggest. Uh, so, I have a lot of like influencers who I'm friends with and who I, you know, do stuff with. Uh, so that's it with Twitter. Facebook, I add everyone on Facebook, uh, and I just kind of like, like, okay, so like, like the way that you win on the internet, and just in life in general, like if you build friends, it's like, you're not really trying to build a fan base, you're trying to build a friend base, okay? Like, I don't, like, I don't have like, and, and like my YouTube is like big and stuff, but, um, but, but that the way that I've done it is like, I'll upload videos of like me, you know, uh, acting stupid, you know, one, like one day instead of like a music lesson or something, you know, because like people like that stuff. It's like stuff that like their friends would do. So like I have these people like follow me, um, you know, who like like they know what I had for breakfast or like that I went, you know, or that like a guy was break dancing in the subway and I caught it and I thought it was awesome. Oh, so, I saw. I was actually passing that around work the other day. Oh yeah, okay, cool. No, I mean, like I'm like in the middle of like a subway car. This just dude. Guy. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, it was just this guy flipping around in the middle of a subway car, and I don't know. You know, how many people have been on the subway, but uh, especially in Pittsburgh. <laughs> but, you know, you don't have much room there. And, and, and these guys are, like, doing these tight spins and everything, not hitting it. It was surrounded by people, didn't hit anybody. It, is, it was the sickest thing I've seen ever. 
so that's it. Like that's so that's what I do is I just choose those six sites. I tackle the people in those sites. I build authentic relationships, and I, I come out with kick-ass content every fucking day. Um, and that's it. By the way, I curse a lot too. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you, you started uh, you started Twitter uh, a little bit ago, and I've seen you bounce around. There. What's your kind of feedback been for that? Um, I'm a fan, honestly. I I kind of I don't want to say like I said I quit on MySpace pretty much. I go on there just because it's kind of like my music portfolio and the songs. I got my press kit, all that stuff on there. Um, but one cool thing with the Twitter is, and with all the apps and whatnot, I got to tie it into my Facebook. So every time I tweet, it updates my status on Facebook. So I don't really have to be on Facebook to make people think I am. Yeah. Um, but one cool thing about Twitter is uh, it, you, you're out there immediately. It's on my phone. It's quick and easy. It's a lot easier to use than Facebook or mobile. So I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Um, one drawback with it is that a lot of people will, there's a, it's a 140 character limit for a reason. I don't want to see eight consecutive tweets about your story. That's not what this is about. It's about what you're doing, what's going on. I mean, I throw random quotes up, stupid stuff, like really stupid stuff. Like you said, people, that's, that's what it's there for, not to talk about the plight of the economy in the Middle East. I don't, I don't care about that right now, I don't even hear it. So, but overall with the picture, you know, quick, quick shit, video real quick, picture real quick. Um, it, it's a good time. Do you, do you get a lot of feedback from from fans or anything? I know I see you going back and forth with a lot of other other rappers around town. Yeah, that's see that's also a gift in a car. So you said the movers and shakers. You're kind of you know you're always in your in your niche, um, which is like I said, gift in a car. It's cool because you can keep up. But at the same time, it's good to branch out and, and get it fans. And that's one good thing about Twitter. People you don't know, random, whatever you know, they follow you, all that stuff, and then. You, you can have a quick interaction with them, whereas when you're on MySpace and Facebook and all that with messages and going back and forth, all you have to do is check your ads and boom, and you can get down pretty quick. Uh, and kind of to that, I know, uh, you know, with my own personal experience, one of the big things with music is you, you know, get to know people, get to know people doing other shows and everything. The more people you know, the more opportunity you have to get in front of people. Um, it, I know, especially in Pittsburgh, uh, you know, there's a lot of negativity and positivity out there. We've all seen it on the Facebook and everything. Um, you know, how do you, how do you guys think, especially you with here in Pittsburgh, uh, how do you think uh, these tools have helped people uh, in the community? I mean, is it just another chance for them to go at each other's throats, or is it another chance for them to actually become a community here? Go and what do you mean? Like, is it another chance to go at each other's throats? Like, um, there's a lot. Of, well, especially, especially in the hip hop scene, there's a lot of uh, negativity. Oh God, right, right, right. Or feuds or, or whatever. Um, so, so I mean, do you see more of the of the positive versus the negative, or is it just a chance for a negative to flourish with the, with the trolls out there? Oh, I mean, it, I mean, it can be whatever you want to be. Like, if you hate someone and you wanted to like put it out there, like that's cool. You know, if you like someone, you want to put it out there, that's cool too. It's like. Yeah, like, I don't really think it's like a big deal um, either way that you use it. I mean, like that all, you know, like I think that like people get hung up a lot too about like social media. They're like, oh, you know, got a Twitter, got a Twitter. But like the most important part about being online is being offline. I think people forget that a lot. It's like the way that I meet these people isn't because I'm tweeting them all day. It's because like I'm going out to like meetups. And I, you know, like I'm like going bowling with them, and like I'm like have a blast, and, and like going skydiving one weekend, or so. You know, it's like what, like all these things. And so like I generally don't even like really use these online sites a, a whole lot. The way that I just like just built like my actual like audience was just doing it organically, just like one person at a time. You know, like maybe like going into a forum and telling someone that you have a music show or that you you know arrange stuff, or maybe like you tell someone, um, you know. Um, we call it, um, you know, like, you know, oh, you know, there's like, there's a meetup or there's like a music concert, so like, then you go to the concert. But it's like, I, I really don't hang too much on these sites, but like, what's great about having, um, you know, like a knowledge of like, I think, this is like, the biggest thing about these online sites that I do want to mention it too, is that, uh, is that the money is in the archive. Uh, I think people forget that a lot. Is that, so like, on my YouTube channel, I have, uh, you know, hundreds of videos. And so I'm in the YouTube partner program, so I get paid for my videos. So like if I were to teach a music lesson to a class like this every day,
that I'm putting in labor and it's not being archived, but I could teach it a video once, upload it, and then get paid for that video for the rest of my life. And the same thing with my music. It's like, that if you go back to my site, and this this is like my old site. I, I've since started a new business, but this is uh, old stuff. But anyway, it's like right, like, like, right, like right here. Like I have, here we go. So I have a store where people buy my stuff. I sell my music. Here's my archives. This is a, a U page for, for like my fans and stuff. Um, so like it's it's a website all about them. Like I make them, I turn them into rock stars. Um, and then obviously contact. But like the idea is like when you go to my site, I'm not only getting paid for my videos, uh, which are it, which are here, but I'm getting traffic that might buy my music or might buy buy a shirt. And so like you multiply it by like thousands of people every day that are going here, like checking it out. Like that's how you make like money. It's like through the archive. Like you set it up, and then like you don't ever worry about it again. This is like I try to like tell people this all the time. Like the money is in is in the archive. Just archive everything. Like blog posts, videos, um, you know, running music and like uploading it to like to your site. Just like you know, so that when you sleep, like you're making money. So that, like that's how how I use online yeah. stuff. Now, now one weird thing you were saying about the spring is a break. Mm -hmm. Ever since Twitter came up, there was been a group of folks that I've noticed, and I went to a show the other day and they had to run the MC logo. Yeah. It was T W T F A M instead of run the MC, and they have made a, a conglomerate of about six, seven acts that are now Twit fans, and they're doing a big show and. So it, it has brought a couple people together that never would have got the chance to see it. Um, you know, but brought together both, you know, with everything, there's going to be clicks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is what it is. And then there are the computer geeks, and there's the East End kids that are too cool for school, and there's the Southside kids that get drunk, and, you know. So it's just, it, it is what everything, but like I said, I mean, just what you said, I've seen. But there's a lot of chance for opportunity of these people coming together. Yeah, I mean, like, that, they got shirts. I saw mm -hmm. somebody wearing a shirt, so they're getting it out there. Um, and we talked a little bit about merchandising and, and you know how people are making money and everything. Uh, what do you think about the concept? There's a lot of talk, uh, of course. Uh, you know, we're all big fans of the RAA here and what they've been doing with the music industry. Uh, <laughs> and there's a lot of talk about uh, the music you're selling is not what you're going to make the money off of anymore. It's going to be the shows, the merchandise. Uh, many many people are are just giving the music away, selling the T-shirts, and trying to get enough. Of that critical mass that they can afford a tour and fill and fill some venues. What do you think about that kind of shift in the position there? It's a tough call. It really is. Um, I mean, I give a lot of my music away, period, because who buys music anymore? If you're gonna buy an album, you're not buying that. You're buying one song. Um, with the torrents, with you know the iTunes and all that. I mean, it's a song. It's either a song that you buy for a dollar or an album you get for free. Um, and you know, we're all guilty of it, I myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I face an ethical dilemma. I'm going to steal your music, but then ask you to pay for mine. Um, and and I, I think it's wrong. So for that, I give I give my music away. Um, now at the same time, even if I was selling CDs, I have paid at least 50 times more money on shows than I have selling CDs by far. Um, I make more selling T-shirts. Than I do selling the CDs. See, so, yeah, I know, I know you. I've seen you at the shows with like the box of T-shirts, and you'll go through a box in a show. I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, some some friends of ours over in Ohio with no clue. They have well, luckily they have one guy that's an artist, and they will have a table of stuff and with oh, different designs and everything, and they seem to be really good with it. So, I mean, it, it, it sucks that we can't sell music anymore, but that is the change of the times, and we can either be mad or adapt. And I'd rather yeah. and get stuff in the back. Um, what do you think about this? Uh, I, I give all my music away for free. Like, all my music here uh, is all free, but there's an option to buy, too. So a lot of people will sometimes not buy the song for a dollar. Like, they'll download it free, and then they'll, like, like buy it for, like, PayPal for, like, 10 bucks, some, like, sometimes. So, like, that's cool. Um, and, it, and, like... Like the way that that I do it is that um is that I give away my music free like the like like the option because I make the money on the back end like I'll give away a song for I would have made a dollar on it uh, but in lieu of that dollar they, that kid will be so happy that he has my music 
uh, that he downloaded for free because uh, maybe he doesn't have a credit card or something. And he'll go off and tell all his friends in like in school. And maybe like you know one of his friends might buy a song of mine. So like I'll 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 get that dollar back sometime, whether it's tomorrow or a year from now. I will absolutely always make that money back. So yeah, and and and, and it's like the same thing. Is like in lieu of like that one dollar thing. If I go and like do like a speaking gig in Philadelphia, um, I'll just like maybe like he's on like my like newsletter because he likes my music or something. Uh, then I'll do a speaking gig and then I'll pay for it and see me speak in Philadelphia or something. So yeah, it's like like in a sense, music is almost becoming like a lost leader, right? Where like you just give that away for free and then you make a shit ton of money on like you know. Speaking gigs or playing shows or selling shirts or you know doing videos or whatever. Yeah, you have a question? Can you talk more about some of the other income streams you have? I mean, you mentioned a few minutes ago being a YouTube partner. Mm -hmm. What I mean, what does that look like? What's the process like for that? And maybe you can talk a little bit more about some of the other income streams that you have. Sure. Uh, okay. So I feel like I'm, I'm like talking down or not talking to people. Um, okay. So uh, the way that uh, so when you upload videos to YouTube, I'm like, eh, eh. when you upload videos to um, when you upload YouTube videos, uh, you're not getting paid on. But that if you grow a subscriber base enough, YouTube will approach you to be in their partner program. And on the bottoms of the videos, it'll be have like an like an ad on the bottom says so like. And I you think know, I think there's been talk about them opening up so that you, they can actually have an application process for you to do that. Yeah. Too. Like I think there's been they're 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 oh, broadening it a little bit. Oh, okay. So. Um. Oh, so okay. Well, well. Uh, so um, in the video, like you'll tag it. Like if I'm doing a video on like eight notes or whatever, I'll give it tags. And so in Google AdSense. Any video with those taglines, it'll show up on the bottom like, hey, buy this book on Athens or something. Who's ever in like the Google AdSense, um, you know, like program. So that's how that works. Like then we split it 50-50, um, and that and that's it. Like if someone goes to buy it, uh, you know, like click on the ad. I mean, it's just like Google AdSense that I just have all my videos. So that's how that works. Um, and then the, the way that I monetize my videos too, which that's like a whole other thing. Is that I, I actually monetize my videos three ways. Like if you uh, scroll down uh, on my site, so like I have these sponsors here, uh, who are these are all what the hell's wrong with me today? Just, just point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like like why not? Yeah. Um, okay. So like I have like eight, uh, seven, seven sponsors uh, who are all exclusive sponsors on my channel, um, and so. Um, the way it works, the way that I monetize this is that I actually you have to pay a lot of money to be a, a, an exclusive on my channel. So the way it works, like I'll teach, um, but my guitar, my amplifier, my shirt, the books in the back, um, you know, all that stuff is like exclusive, um, like paid stuff to be in my video. So that's how it works. Even my strings are are, are uh, they're. Um, Ernie Ball strings. That's a Tech 21 amplifier. It's an Ovation guitar. Uh, Sibelius is the music program that I write when I do screenshots of like me writing music. I use Sibelius. Hear and Play is like a is like a, a listening thing. It's like you know how to like you know read music. Uh, just strings. Um, it's just a string seller. Ultimate guitar is like, is like a huge tab site. And like you know whatever. So I'll get paid for it to be in the video, but then I also have Google AdSense over top of my video, and then. Um, you know, it's just like like a whole thing. But a lot of times, my Google AdSense will clash with my sponsors in the video, but no one's ever said anything yet. So that's <laughs> like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll be playing like an like Ovation guitar, and my Google AdSense and will be like, buy Fender guitars. And I'm just like, oh shit, I really don't want to say anything, but they have it. Sorry, mm -hmm. I didn't hear anything. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I've been like talking about this like for years, like no one didn't care. I mean, they don't, they like, they like, they don't complain. So I would see like, I guess everything's cool. And, and this is this can uh, apply to just regular musicians as well. I mean, there's been a lot of like, uh, you know, the groups getting sponsored by something and, and playing, you know, making sure they play live shows on certain guitars and everything. Um, is it? I mean, is this all stuff that you would use anyways? I mean, is it? it we talked about yesterday about have if you have sponsors. Have it be something that you would probably be using anyways. You believe in it doesn't betray the audience. Say, well, you know, he's, you know, he's supporting. It. He's talking about this because you know he's getting money from the company and everything. Like, how do you balance that? 
That is an awesome question, and the answer is I everything that I use, I, I would have used if they didn't sponsor my show. Okay, right? Wonderful answer. Yeah. <laughs> no, that <laughs> is no, that is but that, that is almost as not true. <laughs> No, that, that is the absolute answer. I was using an amazing guitar before I approached Ovation. And I kind of like, not random, I'm just like, hey, um, I will use a different guitar um, that I also like if you don't want to sponsor. But they but they were getting so much traffic from like teaching that um, you know, I was like, hey, like, I'll still use the guitar, but like I'll get a better replacement or something, or I'll start blogging about it more. And so that's how it works. Like people are, are always asking about monetization. I have no problem talking money. I love talking money. Uh, I charge $1,000 uh, um, a month for each ad here, and my Google AdSense, uh, I have 400 videos, and it's like, um, I think it's like $20 CPN or something, because it's a very, like a very targeted market. So my Google AdSense um, will be like a lot of money too. So like, in, in a sense, like I, I, like I always say, is like that my Google AdSense uh, will actually be my, like that will pay my rent, and then the sponsors and stuff will just be like, you know, like that's just like more money, and then I sell my music and then my shirts, which will give me, give me even more, more money. Um, and then like when I say like taking this offline too, like I'll do speaking gigs, you know, or I'll, you know, teach private lessons for a lot of money, like leverage like my online success to show a student what I can do for them privately. So, like there's so many different ways of making money and that, and like I'm doing all this stuff like getting a large email subscription, uh, not email subscription, email newsletter um, subscribers. So if I ever wanted to go on tour, um, I could, you know, probably go on tour. Like, and that's like my ultimate goal is like to go on tour with my music, with like people who like my music. So, in, in a sense, like this is just kind of like, a, you know, like just to get me to go on tour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and as a side note, just remember where you heard this first, because this is my new prediction. Since nobody's buying music, the record companies are going to be done very, very soon. It's it's going to happen. And as he says, he's making money off these ads. You will see uh, Ovation Guitars presents Metallica's new CD. The sponsors are going to be paying for these new CDs. So once the labels die, these companies are going to be paying for the music because of the marketing. You'll see Kraft Mac and Cheese. We've already experiment there. Remember us? I think it was last Oz Fest. With Rockstar. It was, it, it was, they just had a buttload of sponsors. Yeah. And you could go on and get your tickets for free. And I could definitely see that. Like, you want to, you're thinking like a Metallica, you'll download the next Metallica album for free, presented by. Or, or you'll see the mac and cheese logo on the top of the next hand one hand city. So and then that, begs, that begs the question, it's kind of an obvious uh, thing you just mentioned to it. Um, so somebody getting started, you know, trying trying to get out there, you know, 10 years ago, if you were trying to start to make music, uh, you would put the demo together and you would just sit, you know, blast the uh, ARs sure, the and everything at the labels. Do we need them anymore? Is that, should we even bother? And, and that's a tough question. Um, I mean, they're, they're, they still have marketing budgets. They still will put you on the cover of the iTunes home page, which is huge because one of my friends got on the front thing and he had like 400,000 downloads in one day. Mm -hmm. That would not have happened without um, a push. Um, are they truly necessary? No. I can, I can hire everybody in this room for one day, pay you all 50 bucks, and make each one of you work for eight hours straight, clicking and typing. And watch what we can get done. Blogs, Twitter, they you name it, I will make you guys work hard, but in eight hours we will get some shit done. Then let's do this. <laughs> I mean that's what it is, honestly. Yeah. You know? yeah. But 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 to that and that's why you're all here. We right off the door. We all, we all need blockers now, right? Um and, and, and to that, um oh, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> Um, then we, we, we talked to the old concept of street teams and, and, and the community and organizing that, where you actually do can get some, you know, the people to online street type. teams are real life street teams. Um, Different ball games. Okay, well, you, what do you think about that between the two? Real life street teams you pay for a lot of money. You're paying hourly plus I brought up a stack of flyers. Those things cost me a lot of money. 
through the um, digital world, all your paintings for the uh, the graphic designer. Um, it's it's good to have your own domain, and I don't care what you do, I don't care what site you use, whatever, whatever. Buy a real domain. If you ever tell me to go to myspace.com slash your band, I'm gonna tell you thanks, but no thanks. Mm -hmm. Buy the domain, have it auto redirect. I don't care what you do, but don't give me a slash. So you you, you have a .com basically. I have a .com and it auto redirects, and I'm actually about to get a one page domain where as soon as you go to my page, it'll have. You want to go to my Twitter? You want to go to my Facebook? You want to go to my YouTube? You want to go to my MySpace? Quite easy, right off. The yeah, and, and typically even the major labels, like I know I've seen this a lot with the, the work of them, Spur of Noise, is they they have the Twitter page or they have the MySpace pages for everybody. There's no more site like it used to be. They'd have that .com in their album, and it goes straight to their MySpace page. These days. And even when they did a website, you know, they put it together as basically a brochure for that album, and stayed up there for the next year and a half until the next album came out. Or six months, knowing, knowing that label, um, and you know they really didn't get much use of Stack. It was there; it didn't really generate anything. But now they, they're hooking up the MySpace and the Twitter coming in. Now you can connect Twitter to MySpace, which maybe that'll help them. You know that I can update my MySpace now and not think about it. So that actually, so I, I actually could raise my hand. On See that? Well, I need you need to tell me <laughs> how to do that before the session. Oh, they, they, they have had. You can't miss if you logged in the last couple of weeks, I which obviously we haven't. I have. um, <laughs> But, but that's notice we're all a little older. Hate to break the news to everybody. Mm -hmm. But we are getting older. And the young kids are still on it. Heavy. Especially in the urban areas. FYI. But um kind of on the street teams, um, like aren't you kind of generating, you know, with the word of mouth and everything, you know, somebody's got a blog on my space to say, hey, I checked out uh you know, I, I stumbled across this basic sickness guy, and they're starting to talk about there on their blog. They throw your little player on their page. Is that helping kind of facilitating that same the same effect that a street team you know, yeah. used to do with running around with flyers? And it's a lot cheaper and easier. You can get a 14 year old in Kansas, whereas I, I can't touch that physically. I really can't. Um, mm -hmm. And it's I mean it's all through the line. If I really want, I get the kids. I, I got a big list where I occasionally send out packets in the mail, but what does it really do? And not much anymore. Not much anymore. I go to the record store with my flyers, like a cornball, and I'm like fighting for a space this big, and I can't get a fucking quarter page flyer on it because there's fucking a million things on it. It's annoying as hell. Annoying as hell. But save a tree, honestly. Save a tree. Go green. Don't wait. I, I waste money with with the flyers because when I go to shows, I take handfuls and throw them out because I yeah, I do showcases, you know, other bands. No, people go see their friends. They don't know who I am. They're not going to remember me unless I put something in their hand. So I put something in their hand, it works. But as for walking up and down Carson or walking through Oakland with a handful of flyers, I don't want to say that it doesn't work, but I don't feel it's as effective as it used to be. Whereas digital, we'll put it out there. Because if you put it on, I, see, I follow you, I see the shit you put up, I click on it. Mm -hmm. That's simple. And I didn't have to pay you anything to do it either. Yeah, yeah, well, let's you know, yeah, well, I, I've supported uh, uh, Ryan for a long time with WesternPHLs.com, which is actually, uh, you know, a big secret. I'm shutting it down in a month, actually. Um, but wow. yeah, hey, wow. that's your bombshell. Wow. Um, but uh, but it, it, it's okay. There's there's some stuff coming up to replace it. Um, but that that's one thing. Like I get contact from my site by supporting these guys, and I get you know. He hands me his album back when I was selling. You know, any, any, any band will, will hand me their album when they find out what I'm doing. Um, so it's guys like me that you should be looking for. Guys with the little, uh, I love music and I want to talk about it sites that are trying to do something. Um, I mean, you know, big labels like Suburban Noise send me stuff now, you know. Uh, and so, so when, you know, I'm doing an interview with somebody big like that, like from Head PE or something, it's right next to the interview I did with this guy. It's, you go you go look up WPAJ interview up there. Um, it's a you will see a mix of local and underground artists right next to the big guys that actually talk to little guys like us. You know. Um. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, I'm a music blogger in Pittsburgh. I'm just sort of curious. Uh, like, what do you find is big in this area? I mean, Pittsburgh is sort of like an in between city. Like, we're not a big city. But then again, we're not a small city. Like, where do you actually promote yourself locally? 
Like, I know if there's the venues, Mr. Smalls, you have Club Two. I don't know where you play, though. We did review your CD a year ago when you did the thing at the Peterson Event Center. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, Good but, review, by the way. Yeah, our buddy dropped it. He loved the CD. The kick's ass. Um, kick's ass. <laughs> what do you like around here? What do you do? Uh, to tell you the truth, Jesse told me I, I've kind of fallen off the face of the world musically for the past couple. I, I bought an Alice like a chain. Yeah, I've been, I've been doing other shit for the past good like six months, so I've kind of disappeared. But um, when I am around, I mean, like he said, you have to take it beyond digital world. You got to go to shows. You got to talk to people. Um, if you're an introvert. Good luck making it in the music world because when you're out in, in line at the fucking grocery store, if you can't talk to the person behind you and bullshit, good luck. Um, and like it's it's foot man, I'm, bars. I'm out. I always got a pocket full of flyers. So if I'm bullshit with somebody at the bar, blah blah blah. One thing leads to another. Here's my flyer. Check it out. Um, I mean, I still I'm, I'm heavy digital. That's why he got me on the panel. And that's a good thing because I haven't been able to do shit like this. I haven't really been able to make new music. I haven't really been out as much as I would like to be. But due to the internet, I haven't died yet. If, if it wasn't for the internet, if this was and, fucking five, seven, ten years ago, I'd be fucking dead for gone. And that's that's one thing with me. It's fallen off since. But when when uh, when my group started kind of like, hey, we're not getting together to get music together. We're not getting together to tour. I was like, we plan to in the future. We started a podcast. I called him up every week and I was like, what's going on with you? And our, our group was is basically, it's a comedy kind of rap group and and it's about the stupid crap that we do and, and talk about. And he's, my, my partner in it is great about just going off on stuff. And, and it, you know, one engages your audience to let you, know, let you know a little bit about you and, and especially, you know, the, the ongoing kind of theme of what you're doing, which it really fit well with that. Um, and then, you know, keeping your MySpace updated with stuff that's going on or, or you know, or you know, your thoughts on what's going around, on around, you know, your scene and everything. Um, so, and and it keeps you up in the Google searches, you know, just by just refreshing it with something yeah. going on. Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing that I did want to ask oh, a question. Yeah, uh, just to sort of uh, backtracking to your sponsor and some of that. How do you get, or what point you get your site at to a point where they're ready to pay a thousand dollars a month? That's what I was just. Going to say. And on a side note, I think I do have uh, your session from last year recorded somewhere. Uh, I'll probably put a link up. Uh, I have cards. If anybody wants to email me. Do I curse a lot there too? Uh, probably not. Probably not a little much. bit. A little bit. Okay. A little bit. Cool. Um, but he did, a really, cool. he did a really good session about how you, uh, you know, and just I, said I'm doing this and just went and started your your thing and got sponsors. Yeah. Uh, well, la well, last year I, I was actually charging 250 bucks a month. Um, but I, I also wasn't living in Manhattan last year. So, yeah. Um, but then like everything grows. But okay, so here, so here's how I did it. Is that I actually didn't even make, and this is the same thing if you're like in a band too. Is, um, is I didn't make my first dollar until six months into my daily show. So I grew it or, I grew it organically and it was like one person, like you know, like I would have like one subscriber the first week, I'm like talking to like one person. By the way, like this on the bottom is uh, wait, what the hell is wrong with that? Uh, but this is actually a, like a live chat. People are talking in my pre-recorded video. So I Ustream my video, and I used to be in the Ustream partner program, but I've since downstack and I don't I, I don't teach music lessons much online. It's more the it's it's more I sell my music, which is a separate website. It's called Four Orchestra, and I arrange um, guilty pop players for orchestra. So like I've done like you know like Lady Gaga, like Michael Jackson, like all these like crazy stuff. But anyway, um, but like here, like guys, it's like, what well, are you angry with me or or whatever? But uh, except like they'll say like, hey, how do you play eight notes? And I'll show them. So that's what that is. Um, and sometimes like you'll see like sponsor stuff come up here, which then it goes against. Um, like this, and my Google AdSense sometimes, but it's cool. Uh, so that's all. It's like I grew it like really organically. Like the first week, I would have like a person on the bottom, just like one person talking to me. Then like the next week, it was like two people, and five, and ten. So it got to the point where like I had maybe like a community, a community of like I'd say like maybe like fifty people, and it was like very targeted. So then that's it was at that point that I approached my sponsors, and I'm like. 
hey, um, you know, it's going to be, you know, let's let's do like like 500 bucks a month. Like you can be the exclusive, my first sponsor. Like I'm talking it up, right? I'm like, you can be my first sponsor uh, of my growing show. And they're like, nah, we don't want to do it for 500 bucks. Like that's a lot of money. And yet, in the back of my head, I'm like, that's nothing because. I was researching, okay, so if you're in a, like, if you're reading a, like, music magazine, uh, like, a very specific, like, trade mag, it'll cost you $8,000 for a one-page color advertisement. And that's just normal. In a trade magazine, like, it's so, it's so expensive. So, I'm like, well, there's 300 advertisements in a music magazine. And if, what if I do, like, just seven or eight? Specific, you know, like targeted people online. In theory, if I grow enough, now I'm I'm the third the size of a magazine. My my whole music community. So, but I charge so much less, and I'm exclusive, and I'm engaged with people like that. When you're reading a magazine, you can't see someone playing a guitar, but you can in my broadcast. By the way, like my broadcast is very authentic. Like it, it's just me. Like this is just a backdrop. Like that's just my sofa. This is my filing cabinet in the back, and then just a view of the city. It's like, and that's it. It's like there's like there's no green screen. Like, I can be really authentic. No one wants to feel like that they're being like, you know, like marketed to. Like that's what the, like that's why I get like, a lot of my click through rates. Like I'm their friend. Like I'm not like a guy in a suit like talking to them. But anyway, so then like it took me like the first month, maybe like maybe like like the second or, like the second month, I approached like all these sponsors, and I'm like. Hey, I'm so much more affordable. I have a bigger, not a bigger, but I have like a more engaged audience. And so then, then it was originally like 500. They said no. The next one, I'm like, cool, we'll do it for like 250. They're like, no. I'm like, cool, let's do it for 100. Then like the next one, I'm like, cool, let's do it for 100. They're like, fuck no. They didn't say fuck. Um, <laughs> and then like the next time, I'm like, all right, cool, 50 bucks, 50 bucks. And they're like, okay, cool, we'll jump in. So like my first check for fifty bucks was like the best day of my life. It was awesome. Um, and then uh, then the next week, and, and here's where like the social proof come, uh, like comes in at too, is that when you get the first sponsor, like when you break that ground, then your second sponsor sees that you are sponsored by someone. They you know they don't know for how much money. Um, but then at that point they're like, oh cool, like we'll jump in on it, you know. Like, and then 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 when they jump in, you now have like two social proof stuff, you know. And then the third sponsor jumps jumps in. So it took me six months to get that first fifty dollar check. Um, so you called you know, like Ovation and you asked for somebody like the marketing department or you targeted you knew the contact again. Yeah, just yeah. And on and on the back of these music magazines too, like they have like an advertiser list. You know, and then you just go in there and you just stalk and find out who is the marketing director. Yeah, and it's so easy to find out these things. And then if not, then you just call the marketing director. Hey, guy, and like say like that you know what you're talking about. That like you've been there before, right? Like, hey, can I talk to the marketing director? This is Walt Rivera, you know, of great, of like great wave or whatever. And they're like, oh yeah, cool, Mr. Rivera, blah blah blah. I'm like, awesome. And then I get that kind of like, hey, this like that's cool thing going on. But, you know, but like that's the idea. And so. Uh, I've been doing it now for I think it's like two years now. I started this in 2007, I think seven, 2007, yeah, because uh, it was a year after I graduated from college, um, and that's it. So, um, and then like every month when I got a new sponsor, like let's say like my first sponsor was like 50 bucks, my next sponsor I would make for like 100 bucks, but I wouldn't tell them that the first sponsor was 50 bucks. And then when I got those two, the next one was like 200 bucks. You know, and then the next one jump on. And at this whole time, like my community's growing too. So it's not it's not staying static. And like my community's growing, so my sponsorship rates should be going up. You know, and they're getting such a kick ass return rate too, selling the cards and stuff. So if they see like this subscription like rate is up for your your user uh, community is up to a certain level, that's what you can show them. Yeah. And just go out and say, look, this is my track. Yeah, they want to see hardcore numbers. Hardcore numbers, and the fact that, and you have to do it every day, because if you don't vlog and do your video every day, then you're missing out on a couple things. One, you're missing out on growing your community, because obviously, if you vlog more, you're going to get more people to subscribe. And also, sponsors want to see fresh content. They're not going to pay a thousand dollars a month for somebody to do like once a month. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. How are you promoting your site? Uh, now it's I mainly just uh, like let them like kind of coast. And I let my students promote it for me. I put my I put like my whole audience to work. Like if someone buys my music or if they buy it for free or if they get it for free, I'll say, Hey Walt, this is awesome. What can I do to promote you? Or you know, like what can I do 
uh, you know, for like music. I'm like, just tell all, all your friends in school. But that's it. Uh, it's that, like, my site's pretty much like SEO, pretty hardcore, and I get a lot of press and stuff. Um, what all are you doing for SEO other than keywords? Uh, well, um, try, like, I get, like, like, a lot of, like, inbound links that are coming in, so that helps me hardcore. I do a lot of keyword stuff, but I also write about topical stuff, too. Uh, so, like, I might teach a music lesson on, like, Michael Jackson, like, the, like, the same day that he dies. So, like, all this traffic comes in and it links to me and finds out who, who I am. So that's basically what I do. So you get organic traffic based on current news traffic. Because yeah. Because no one else is doing that. No one's teaching these lessons. Like that if Lady Gaga falls down a flight of stairs tomorrow and it makes the front page big, yeah. I'm going to teach a music lesson on Lady Gaga. Yeah. But, like, that's definitely how they do it. And then you get organic traffic. Yeah, and, and maybe I'll fall down and put a stair in my video. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like that, that's the idea is like to stay topical. Like just, yeah, I mean like, yeah, like stay topical. You don't pay for click at all? Uh, everything paid, no, I don't. Yeah. I don't, no. Everything I do is through my sponsors. I, I don't have a whole lot of like links in my blog or anything. Any more questions okay. before we like, let you guys go to lunch? All right, well, thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, I guess, uh, Mr. Bird, well, of course, Paul Rivera.net, and all of, his, all of his links are there at the top. We're going to find it. I have a basic sickness.com, of course. I have a bunch of flyers and a free shipment. Um,